Okay, so there's the Kona and I'm trying to charge it. And there's where I'd normally charge it. Now this video is all about electric car charging. It's from what I've learned from researching, testing electric cars and talking to owners. And I'm going to be using the Hyundai Kona as an example, although it applies to pretty much any electric vehicle. Now there's two types of Kona, there's the extended range and there's the standard range. The difference between the two is primarily the price, nearly $70,000 versus $63,500 and, um, and also the motor. So we've got 150 kilowatt motor here, 395 newton meters, 100 kilowatt there, same amount of torque. Now I haven't driven the standard range but what the numbers tell me is that off the line, immediately pulling away, it would feel exactly the same pretty quick due to the the same torque figure but as the vehicle gets quicker and quicker the extra 50 kilowatts of power on the extended range would start to tell over the standard range but the standard range would still move along pretty quickly. Now um, the most expensive part of an electric vehicle is the battery which is why the uh, cheaper vehicle has a smaller battery 305 kilometers of range I'd suggest that's still going to be plenty for around town but the extended range is what you'd want for interstate trips. Now, a couple of things about range. Um, the figure you want to look for is WLTP, Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. Um, there are older standards such as NIDA, but that's the one you want. Um, the cycle itself is pretty realistic. It goes for 30 minutes up to 131 kilometers um, an hour, um, urban mix and temperatures, etc. Now, Although that's a fairly good representation of, of range, you can certainly use it for comparative purposes, there are quite a few factors which affect the range of an electric vehicle, and a couple of them are the same as an ICE vehicle. The first one is car setup. Um, you've got to inflate your tyres um, correctly, various other things like, like that. No difference from um, an ICE or internal combustion engine vehicle. The second one, a huge one, is driving style. If you drive around very fast, on, on and off the accelerator, don't observe um, traffic properly, then you'll definitely use more fuel be that battery power or, or diesel doesn't make a difference there now there's a couple which are specific to EVs and the first one is heating and cooling we're going to look at that later on in the video um, yes if you turn the air conditioning on an ice car then you will definitely be using um, more energy but with the case of a uh, electric vehicle they use a lot more energy because there's no ready source of heat and then um, battery efficiency as well um, unlike your mobile phone we just use is it hot, cold, whatever else, it doesn't matter. The battery for an electric vehicle ideally operates in a fairly, well, in a, in a certain temperature range, not too hot, not too cold, and the battery will use some of its energy to get itself into that state, which makes it more efficient, but also prolongs the life of, of the battery. And that's not something ICE cars need to worry about. Okay, what we're gonna do now is take a look at different charging options. First glance, it might seem like there's a bewildering array of chargers and cables and networks on the market, but in fact, you only need to worry about a few of them, and that is getting simpler day by day. So here they are. Now, the first one is your home charger, and you can just plug the vehicle in straight at home. You should really use an EVSE for that, as I'll explain in a moment, but that will give you around 12 kilometers per hour of charging. Now, that figure is about accurate for the high-end Icona. I've got on tested with the 64 kilowatt hour battery. Vehicles larger batteries take longer to charge, vehicles with smaller batteries take less time to charge. Now uh, you've also got the CCS charger too, CCS2, that's a DC fast charger, that will probably put around about 250 to 370 kilometers per hour of charge in your car, but that figure is only good for about 80% charge, because after that it starts to tail off, whereas this figure here is good all the way from 0 to 100%. Then you've got your Type 2, um, it's sort of halfway between the two, it will charge fairly quickly, maybe 20 to 100, you often need to have an external cable for that so bring your own cable and then if you're traveling around there's two types of charger which are not dedicated to EVs but are very useful the first one is three phase and you might find those at showgrounds or racetracks or other facilities where you plug in heavy duty electrical equipment if you have an adapter you can charge your vehicle in I've charged a Kona and I got 45 kilometers per hour of charge out of it and then there's caravan mains charging at 15 amp as opposed to the 10 amp up here you might get around 25 kilometers of charge so really there's not that many charges to worry about and most people will do most of their charging at home and never worry about uh, these other types of charges unless they're going on a long distance trip 
So if you're going to charge your EV at home for long periods of time, you do need to get your electrical system checked out. And this photograph, uh, supplied to me by Bryce Gayton of evchoice.com.au, explains why. The basic problem is this. Your house electrical system is not designed for something like an EV to draw the amount of power it does as frequently as, as it does for as long as it does take to charge. It's simply not up to the task, so you must get things checked out. And specifically, what you have to look at is an EVSE, or Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. Um, system. Now this is basically a wall charger here which is connected into your house and that is something you can use to safely charge your EV. So what's the advantages? One, it's actually designed for the load. Extension leads, normal sockets are not designed to have that amount of, of current running through them for that period of time. It's got safety features. If it detects anything wrong it will shut things off. It won't just keep the supply side going down, potentially cause further problems. Um, renewable use. This is really clever. If you've got solar panels or some other form of renewable, then the system can be programmed to detect that and only charge the car when the solar panels um, are generating power, for example. Timing, you can often time your charges from the car, but you can also use the charger itself to time when it will um, charge that car for you. And it's weatherproof, um, unless you've got heavy duty leads then it's uh, quite dangerous to have electrical leads out in the wet. These things are specifically designed to be out in any weather. And there's data, there's all sorts of interesting data, potentially Bluetooth connections you can get. So it's well worth investing $1,500 to maybe $5,000 to get one of these for the sake of safety, particularly if your house has older wiring. To charge the Kona EV at home, this is what you need. First thing is the supplied 10 amp charger, which comes in this handy little um, case, and that actually fits nicely into the boot of the Kona. Okay, then we have to take the uh, 240 volt AC end and plug that in to your house somewhere. Now, when you do that, there's a couple of things to consider. The current draw is actually quite high on, on here and it's a bit like having um, two or three toasters or something like that plugged in. You want to minimise what you're drawing um, from any given power point. So for that reason, uh, you use the shortest, you shouldn't be using an extension cable, but I don't have a choice. If you do have to use an extension cable, then use the shortest possible one you can, which is what I've done here. Uh, make sure it's not coiled up. So this would be a very bad uh, choice because it's A, long and B, there's a lot of coils around it um, and make sure the only thing plugged into the socket is the Kona which is what I've done so I'm going to plug that in here and even then keep an eye on it um, make sure it doesn't overheat now you can see that that's popped up there and that tells me that's um, 10 amps um, and that's ready to go then we just pop that open here remove the plastic cover there remove the plastic cover here and insert and then Give it a second or two and then that will start to turn green as it's done and now you can see that's charging. So that's all you have to do to get your Kona charged at home. And that's going to give me, um, I think, around about 10 kilometres of charge for every hour. So not fast, but if you're leaving it for 12 hours or so, that's, that's quite a bit of, of driving that you're charging up to. So I've just plugged the car in. It says it's going to take 10 hours, 30 minutes to get back to 100%. So the time is now 5 o'clock. So that's basically uh, sometime maybe 3.30 in the morning or thereabouts. Um, it will be ready well before I'm going to get up anyway. So even on a 10 amp charger after you know quite a lot of commuting, driving around Melbourne, um, easily recharge it for tomorrow. Now when it's charging and the car's locked you can't actually pull it out, you've got to um, switch the car off or stop charging so no one can steal the cable. But if for whatever reason you can't pull it out and you should be able to, then there is actually this release uh, you can get to if you pop the bonnet. All right, so here's why you don't really need to worry about charging anywhere else at home. Let's take the Kona, and we're going to run with 450 kilometres um, as, as a start, and that's actually probably a bit conservative, should be about 480. We're going to drive for 100 um, kilometres, and then we're going to charge at home at a conservative 10 hours of uh, 10 kilometres per hour of charge. And we're going to do that overnight. We start Tuesday again with 450. We drive for 200 kilometres. We only charge for eight hours. That gets us. 
to Wednesday, we start with 330 kilometers, we drive another 200, we charge for eight hours, we start Thursday with 200 and so on, but we get to Saturday and then we, we uh, drive for 100, we charge for 20 hours and that brings us back to 450 kilometers for Sunday and that's how we start Monday as well. So basically what we've done here is drive for 910 kilometers, which equates to 47,000 um, kilometers a year, which is way more than the average 14,000 kilometers per, uh, um, per year the average Australian drives so basically charging at home for most people you're never going to have any sort of range concern if you do day trips or just around town. Um, we can decide when we are going to do scheduled charging so it says off peak time hasn't been set target temperature hasn't been set so you can say when you'd like to stop and start charging the car or charge it to a certain time um, and then it will stop or you've got to leave by a certain time it will start at a point where it will just finish before you're going to go that sort of thing um, and charging limit um, that's set to 100% but you could say actually I only want to go to 80% and then stop whatever the case may be um, charging current um, you could also change that as well so if you're using a long extension lead for example you might just want to go down to a reduced um, uh, version there so you've got a, bit, a few options there um, range warning now the range warning is displayed if the distance to destination exceeds the available vehicle range which it does um, but it doesn't do a great job of finding charging stations along the way etc it's really not not that great um, but yeah it will it will make an attempt it's not as good as a tele Tesla where you just tell the Tesla oh here's where I want to go and then um, off it will, it will tell you exactly which stations you've got to go um, to get there now you can use apps like a better route planner to, to do that if you wanted to this is an interesting point so you can see range um, at the moment we've got 93 percent so range is 450 459 kilometers now if i was to um, with the climate off the same now, if i was to add on climate so press this for the heat and then front and rear you see that drops quite dramatically so actually I'm just going to take that off again so it's 459 i just add heat that drops uh, 60 about 80 90k add that in and then add that again and it drops again so using the heater and the air conditioner for that matter makes a big difference to the available range today's drive is done you can see that it's 177.9 kilometers traveled uh, six hours total duration and some of that was just sitting in traffic some of it was just waiting in the car while someone was in the shops and you can do that in an EV pretty easily and just sit there with the heater on or whatever else it's much less environmentally unfriendly than sitting there idling in a petrol car um, range still 345 kilometers left 73 percent battery left and if you want to see what has been used we can just click on that and end the battery and then that tells us that um, driving um, right at the moment uh, 92 percent used eight percent electronics we haven't really used the heating on the way back because it's been warm enough okay so there's the Kona and I'm trying to charge it and there's where I'd normally charge it I know it's a Tesla destination charger but if we look over here it says this machine is temporarily out of service so um, yeah we're going to have to try somewhere else we're going to get on to the plug share um, app and um, see what that can find us for charges so I've got this app here called plug share and that uh, shows us we're in Werby Plaza at the moment here and um, because uh, I have selected um, I've selected my vehicle, the Kona 2021, um, then it will only show plugs which are compatible with that. So if I zoom out here and we can have a look at plugs. So you can see there's some over here and we can just tap on this one and it will tell us that's a type 2 so we know that works for us and then that's uh, Manor Lake Central Shopping Centre. So um, let's go have a look at that and that will tell us free parking there's two um, 11 kilowatt um, hour um, bays there give us an address um, tells us it's a type 2 connector and here's all the people that have used it most recently on 11th of, of, of July so um, that looks like it could be to go we will go over there and take a look at it all right so we're pretty close to the electric charger that's only 90 meters away um, and now we play a game called hunt the charger 
When you're in a petrol car, a diesel car, it's really easy to see the servo because there's this massive sign you know to look for a BP or a Caltex or something like that and there's lots of cars there, they're easy to find. But EV charging points, not so easy to find. So you sort of got to creep along and look for it um, and sometimes they can be a bit difficult to find, particularly at night. So I've not been to this one before. It's left down here, we'll just wait for these people to walk in front of us and then we can continue. So, where is this EV charging point? And of course you hope, if you're running low on um, battery, that it's actually findable and operational. Otherwise, you are going to run into problems now. It's either right up here or possibly the next one, maybe the next one. Have a look. Okay, according to this, oh, there it is. I've, I think we've just gone by it. Yep, we have just literally gone right by it. There it is. So that is the uh, charging point. Now I like reversing into spaces, but because the Kona's charge point is actually on the nose, um, I don't have the option of being able to do that. So it's got to go forward in. Okay, it's a really blowy night, so hopefully you can hear this. And um, anyway, we found a charger. Um, there it is. It's EV Link, a jet charger one, but I can't actually charge from it because you need to um, bring your own cable and um, I don't have one because one wasn't supplied with the Kona, I need a Type 2 cable so I can't actually use this charger um, which is a shame and um, the other one over here um, is also unavailable because I don't have the Type 2 cable to go inside there and you can see where you put that. So yeah, you do need to bring a, um, a few different cables with you if you're going to be successful to charge an EV in different places. Okay, I've remembered my Type 2 cable and I'm back in daylight. So this is a cable I own and uh, plugged it one end in here, the other end into the car and that's charging nicely now. So we'll go inside and have a look and see how quick it actually is charging. So the cone is charging at three and a half kilowatts, a bit quicker than the 2.1 or so I'd get um, at home. It's above 80%, so of course the charging rate is reduced by the faster charges. Now there are instructions on the side, so you can uh, work out how to plug the cable in, etc. But to be honest, I think I think I'd just rather charge at home. Okay, so we want to get this car charged and what we're going to do is use its own navigation to find a charge point. So I can click this and then list and then that tells me where some of the charge points are. Now there's one here at Altona Civic Centre, 11 and a half kilometres away, so I'm going to click that, set that as a destination and off we go. So let's go over there and see if we can get this car charged. Okay, we're coming up to where this charging point is in Hobson's Bay City Council. And then it looks like we take a left here about here. And it should just be there on the right. Will anyone else be there? That's the question. There it is. In all its beauty. Let's see if we can get this thing charged. Here we are, Hobson's Bay City Council. Electric vehicle fast charge. CCS 50 kilowatts, so that's the one that we want. And that goes in here. Now we take both of those out so it fits. Like so. Okay, now. What do we have to do to get this thing started? Start. Okay, so I've got to use the app. Now, which app is it? Let's on the side. Oh, hang on. Charge Fox. There it is. Okay, so I need my Charge Fox app. So we'll get that out. 
charge fox. Okay, so if you can look at that there, we've found uh, at which is here, so we click on that one. Altona Civic Center, charging up to 50 kilowatts, great, free, details. Okay, port B, port A unavailable, port B start so maybe port A isn't working but anyway we'll click on start for that and see what happens oh look things are happening charging your car can you hear that noise that's the sound of electricity flowing and now if we have a look over here look beautiful green and that's charging now the question so it actually tells us we're charging and the question is how fast are we charging so we can find that out by going inside the car so let's have a look inside the car see how fast we're charging so I've just plugged a Kona into the 50 kilowatt charger and it's gone from 4, 7, 10, 12. It's ramping up to the maximum. It's not going to get to 50 kilowatts because the charge is already over 80%. It's actually at 86% and it slows down a bit after that. Now here the vehicle is actually at 64% and that means it's going to charge quicker. You can see it will take only 21 minutes to get to 80%, but then it takes another 40 minutes plus to get to 100%. Okay, so to figure out how long it's going to take to charge, I can click this, and that tells me that with a DC charger, it's going to take about one hour, six minutes, AC station, four hours, 50 minutes, or if I just plug it in at home, the AC portable, 10 amps, that's about 13 um, hours. So I wanted to go back to full charger B, be an hour here. So we've switched the car on, and I've got the heat on, so you, you don't need to sit here with the car off. You can actually put your heater on, um, so we could turn the radio on if we wanted to. TikTok trending. Yeah, I don't really want that, but whatever. It's nice to have that. I'm going to switch that off again. Um, so yeah, you can sit here and enjoy warmth and do whatever you want to do whilst your car charges away. So what I'm going to do now, we've got charging going on there, and I'm now just going to hit stop charging. And that's done, so that's free, didn't cost me anything, so off. So PlugShare is also available from a desktop computer, which is really handy for planning. So I've selected here the Hobson's Bay City Council charger. It's two types, Chadimo and the CCS2. You can see that it's free, you can see where it is, and uh, then you can go down there and you can take a look at all of the people that have checked in and what um, their opinions of it are when they've checked in as well. So you can basically plan everything pretty nicely before you arrive. There's even some photographs of it there as well, like someone's actual charging. So yeah, but, but, so it's really a handy website to have um, to help plan your EV charging trips. What's your view on battery life and replacement costs? Tesla and other industry insiders are suggesting batteries will be good for longer than the life of the car now. So Tesla, are in fact, proposing to start building the batteries into the car structure. And then their thinking is the battery will be good for a million miles, which is about 1.6 million kilometres plus. For the current EVs, where the batteries are guaranteed for eight years, about 70% capacity, uh, people always seem to go, oh, it'll only last eight years, I've got to replace it in eight years' time. And go, no, 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 no. It's like a warranty on anything. We don't expect our car engine to die the day after the warranty finishes. You just have to look at a 20 plus year old car still running on a road with the original motors. Um, and even if you need to replace the battery, um, they still have a use afterwards. So it's not like they're, they're dead and throwaway items. They'll go into storage systems and things like that. And Renault and a a couple of other manufacturers are already setting up systems to do that. I think Renault has set one up in one of their factories of 10 megawatts and they've actually built some of the new Zoe batteries and they live in those thing in their system as well as the older Zoe batteries that have been returned to the factory. So if you want to buy a Zoe battery in the next 10, 15 years, they've got one nicely stashed away that they can pull out that's been gently charged and recharged in that time. So that's part of the... Um, background to it and also uh, the cost of batteries at the moment um, 
most of the time if something fails, it's under warranty, so they cost nothing. After that eight years, well, battery prices are falling rapidly at the moment. They started off eleven, twelve hundred dollars per kilowatt hour ten years ago ish. So a Nissan Leaf battery cost about thirty thousand something dollars to replace then. They're now but well, you didn't ever replace them because they were done under warranty. Nowadays they're about ten thousand dollars replaced. That's a new one. And some of the manufacturers in Japan, there's enough EVs around now that they're actually pulling the batteries in as they've come in out of the cars, pulling them apart because it's generally only a cell that's died or playing up that, that's cutting the range down. They repackage all the good cells back together and I'll sell you a reconditioned guaranteed battery for about half the price. So with modern EVs, there's no need to factor in battery replacement costs. Yes, and that doesn't apply to older ones where they're smaller batteries, so yeah. the older Nissan leaves and things like that, but the newer ones, if my Kona lost 30% in 10 years' time, I'd still have 300k range. How will EV charging change in the future? Well, it'll be like Shell, Ampol, whatever. There'll be different charging network providers. But as everyone gets used to hardly ever needing a refueling station and doing their charging at home or at their destination, people just forget petrol stations ever existed, except for when they use fast DC charging on the road. As I always say, 90% of charging is done at home, roughly, this is the stats. So 90% of petrol stations better start getting nervous. Okay, so things I've learned about charging. 90% of people do 90% of their charging at home off a 10 amp, and that's really all they need. Um, and it's easy. It seems complicated from everything I've gone through in this video, but once you've learned it, you've got into a routine, you know where things are, it's actually no hassle at all. That's what all the owners are telling me, and I can certainly believe that from my uh, more limited experience. Now, your fast DC chargers, typically they're CCS2 and the cable's supplied, but you might wish to invest in a Type 2 cable for those chargers as well. And um, if you do a sort of remote-ish rural travelling, um, being able to take a three-phase cable or a 15 amp is, is pretty handy as well. And the situation's getting better. Since I st first started driving EVs, there's more and more charges, they're easier to use, the situation's just getting better day by day. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, etc. Any questions, drop them in the comments.